I've gotten quite a few complaints about this particular bike, which is cycling, the team feed wide. Some people will say it's shutting down by itself. Some people will say they are trying to pull a certain amount of energy for it, but it's not allowing it. Well, all those is because we're not paying attention to the name plates. Now let's go through the parameters. The first one we have equalization charging voltage 7.6 to 58.4. Now, what does this mean? It means the battery is fully charged, fully charged at 58.4. And trust me, you need to let whichever system you are using, be it a transformerless inverter, a low frequency inverter, or a high frequency inverter, whichever machine you choose to use with this battery, that machine must be able to charge to 58.4. If you are not charging the battery to 58.4, the battery is not at 100%. And the fastest way to kill your lithium battery is when you are not charging it to 100%. There are people that used to say, don't charge it to 100%, let your battery stay at 85%. The cells will not equalize if you are charging to 80% or 85% because you want it to last longer. No, the way to make this battery to last longer, for the cells to last longer, is for it to be fully charged to 100%. You must charge it to 100%. So, if the battery is not charged to 58.6, it doesn't matter, you might have connected the communication cable. You still need to make sure that that system can charge the battery to 58. 58.4. The next one is float charging. The float charging 56.0 to 56.8. That's just where it stays. After it's fully charged, it does stay around that place. That one does not really matter. The one that really matters is the first one, which is the full charge state. Now the next one we have maximum charging current, which is stated here as 200 amps. So this means whichever system you want to use to charge this guy, be it solar, NEPA, your maximum charging current should not exceed 200 amps. You can stay within 100 or, and if you want to charge faster, yes, you can. Let's go up to 200, but don't exceed 200 amps. Now, the next one, we have maximum discharge current. Now, you see this maximum discharge current is from this a lot of speakers. Because the battery is 15 kilowatts, which is 300 amps, if you are trying to pull 300 amps from this battery, it's going to shut down. The 300 amps means 300 amps per hour. If you are trying to draw 300 amps at once, maybe you are using a 10 kilowatts. You want to consume all the load, as all the capacity of the inverter. It's going to pull around 200 amps or even 200 plus. If you are using a 10 kilowatts inverter, this guy, once it exceeds 200 amps discharge point, it will shut down and it will now be like, ah, the battery is shutting down. It's because the load that we are trying to pull, or the current that our load is trying to pull from the battery has exceeded the maximum discharge current. It is 300 amps, but what you can discharge, the maximum you can discharge at the time is 200. You cannot pull out the 300 at once. So we need to take note of that. And now we have the next one, which is discharge cutoff voltage. This one, is very 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 important discharge cutoff voltage here it is stating that 43.2 now just like your battery your 100 percent fully charged this is the low voltage cutoff your inverter most of the high frequency inverter most of the 10.2 their cutoff voltage is 40 volts now this guy says cutoff voltage is 43 the cutoff voltage for this battery is 43 your inverter that is 40 volts is not going to cut off as low battery. It will try to drain this battery to 40 volts, which the battery cannot go down to 40 volts. So the inverter you are using, you must make sure that it does not the, the low battery cutoff of your inverter is not lower than the low battery cutoff of this battery. Your inverter must be around 45 volts. Even if you are using the communication, still check the low battery cutoff. There are inverters that will allow you to edit all these parameters in your inverter. What will happen if your inverter did not cut off at 43 volts is that the battery will shut down itself as a means of protecting itself. Because the inverter that is supposed to shut it down, that one is still seeing it as if the battery is not low yet, which the battery is low already. 
So the battery will protect itself and it will now shut down by itself. That is why people used to say, we get the complaint of BP, 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 no battery, because the battery has shut down itself when the battery refused to shut it down as no battery. Now let's check the communication ports. So here we have RS 485A, then we have CAN communication, we have RS 232, then we have battery link. So let's take split communication ports one after the other. The fourth one is RS 485A and CAN. These two ports are the one that you will use to connect it to your inverter, your BMS. These two are the ones that are the ones that will link a battery to the inverter. Now the next one is RS232. This one is more or less like mode force. You want to connect your laptop. You want to configure if you have the if you have the app. So if you want to connect, if you want to connect to your laptop, if you have um, RJ45 to USB, then you can connect to this RS. Now, the next one is battery link, which is two ports. There are two ports here. These ones are the ones that we link, that you be using to link the battery to each other. This particular battery, we can link up to 16 pieces in parallel. We can link 16 pieces together. So if you are putting a battery link one, you put that battery link two in the other battery. Link one to two, link one to two, and that's how we form the connection, the continuous connection like that. So, this RS 485A. This one, the second one, the battery link is RS 485B. So it is A that will connect to inverter. It is B that will link battery. Don't interchange it. If you interchange, the battery will not communicate. So if you want to communicate, make sure the one that's going to the inverter is RS 485A. And the one that you are using to link your batteries in parallel is RS 485B. So which this battery link is the RS 485B. It's the one that we use to connect all of these batteries together. To put all of this, the battery will work 10-15 years without any issue. That's all. Thank you everyone.